Welcome. This is the second in a series of video tutorials on LaTeX. In this tutorial, we'll learn how to typeset commonly used mathematical notation using LaTeX. Please view the first tutorial, titled Creating a LaTeX Document, before proceeding with this one. Let's begin by creating a new file and saving it as Tutorial 2. As always, we begin our code with backslash document class, and we fill in the arguments, our font size, and then the type of document is article. And we need slash begin document and slash end document. And in between those two commands, we type the body of our code. So the first thing we're going to take a look at is superscripts. And we use superscripts commonly when we want to show exponents. For example, 2x cubed. So let me type 2x cubed. To get the exponent, I use the caret symbol. So there's 2x cubed, but this shouldn't be in text mode. This should be in math mode. So don't forget, you have to wrap the math with dollar signs for math mode. Okay, And um, again, the math mode code appears green and the text mode appears in black. So let's build our document uh, to check and see how it looks. And I'll zoom in so we can see it more clearly. Okay, that looks good. 2x cubed. Now remember when we use single dollar signs to surround the code, we're in inline math mode. So our math appears on the same line as our text. If we wanted to set this apart from the text and have the math on its own line, we would want to be in displayed math mode. And to do that, we open with double dollar signs and close with double dollar signs. So let's build and see if that makes a difference. Okay, so there, now the 2x cubed is on its own line. Now let's try 2x to the power 34. So again, math mode, 2x to the power 34 and end math mode. So I'm hoping um, to see an exponent of 34. And when we build this, that isn't actually what we got. We got 2x cubed and then we got a 4. So when we type superscripts, the single character after the caret symbol is what's going to show as the exponent unless we indicate that we want more than just the next character and we do that by wrapping the entire exponent in curly brackets. So I need curly brackets around the 34 indicating that I want 34 to be the entire exponent or the superscript not just the 3. So let's build that and hopefully now we'll see x to the power 34. Okay good so now I have 2x to the power 34. Let's try 2x to the power 3x plus 4. 2x to the power, and then in curly brackets, and I like to go ahead and type the first one, the opening curly bracket and the closing curly bracket, just so I don't forget, and then I can move my cursor back in between and fill in what I need to fill in. So I want to the power 3x plus 4. That I just type 3x plus 4, and we need to then close this with two dollar signs and we can build and take a look at that 2x to the power 3x plus 4 and finally let's try typing a power raised to a power so we'll type 2x to the power 3x to the fourth plus 5 2x to the power and I'm gonna open and close curly braces so my exponent should now be 3x to the power 4 plus 5. So 3x to the power 4 plus 5. And close math mode. Okay, so I have an, now an exponent within an exponent. Subscripts work in much the same way. But instead of a caret symbol, we use the underscore symbol. 
For example, if I want to type x sub 1, it's x underscore 1. Close math mode. If I need more than one character in my subscript, then again we wrap it in curly braces. For example, x sub 12. And I could have a subscript within a subscript. So I would want x sub 1 sub 2 if all of my subscripts are single characters. Now if I want a subscript within a subscript, I have to be very careful about where I put my curly brackets. For example, if I want x sub 1 sub 2, um, this is not going to work the way that I've typed it right now. I want x sub 1, the entire x sub 1, to have a subscript of 2, so I have to wrap the x sub 1 in curly brackets and then give that a subscript of 2. So if we build that, we see we have, it's a little bit hard to see, uh, but x sub 1 sub 2. Uh, and in the same way, if I wanted x sub 1 sub 2 sub 3, I wrap everything that I want to have that last subscript in curly brackets. So in front of the um, x there and after the 2 there, and then give that a subscript of 3. Next, let's take a look at Greek letters. Greek letters are commonly used in math notation, and the most commonly used one is probably the Greek letter pi. So if we want to display the symbol for pi, we simply have to use backslash and spell out the letter pi. And we want to make sure we put that in math mode. I'll use display math mode and build and we get the symbol pi. Uh, and that works for any Greek letter. So for example, we could use backslash alpha or beta or gamma, etc. to display those lowercase Greek letters. If we wanted to type the formula for the area of a circle, for example, we could do a equals backslash pi. Now we need r and then we want r to be squared. So we use the caret and the 2 and math mode. Let's build that and we have a equals pi r squared. For trig functions, we simply use a backslash and then the abbreviation for the function. So for sine, for example, would be sin. And then in braces, we'll put our argument. So that would give us the sine of x. Or we could do y equals sine x. And this is something you could type in text mode, but the advantage of putting it in LaTeX mode is that it italicizes the variables and spaces everything out properly. Cosine would be slash cos, and tangent would be slash tan. For log functions, we use backslash log for log of x and backslash ln for the natural log of x. If we want to use a different base, for example, instead of base 10, if we wanted base 5, then we go back and use an underscore to get our subscript. So this should give us the log of x in base 5. For square roots, we use backslash sqrt, and you can see it suggests making some suggestions here for me. Um, we have on the top row square brackets 
and curly brackets, in the bottom just the curly brackets. So if we just use the curly brackets, we'll get a regular square root. For example, if I want the square root of 2, I put 2 inside the curly brackets, and that should give me square root of 2. If I add the square brackets in front, then whatever we put inside those square brackets will be the root. So instead of getting a square root, we could do the cube root. So this should give us the cube root of 2. Remember, if we want the root of more than one character, we use we wrap everything in the curly braces that we want to take the square root of. For example, we could find the square root of x squared plus y squared. We can even have square roots inside of square roots. Let's do square root of 1 plus, and I'm going to do the square root of x. So I need another backslash square root of x. When I close my first set of curly brackets, I close my second set of curly brackets, and my double dollar signs to close math mode. So that gives us square root of the quantity 1 plus the square root of x.